What is going on, everybody? We are back here with another interesting tier list. Let me get the mic corrected. All right. <clears throat> we are going to be ranking the My Hero Academia Class 1A students. Uh, if you've not seen or heard of My Hero Academia, it is a uh, an anime. Uh, I'm currently three seasons in and enjoying it quite a bit. And I would highly recommend it if you are into anime or even like superheroes. I think it's still pretty good for that. So without further ado, uh, I have all 20 students here uh, and five tiers from pro hero down to total bust. I'm going to be ranking them on uh, charisma, um, overall hero potential, or I'll even say uh, like, you know, characters like Jiro, right? Like she uh, doesn't have like the greatest like offensive capabilities. Um, but like she could definitely like show up to a situation and act accordingly to to provide uh, a lot of help. So so someone like that would have, you know, pro hero capabilities, even if they're not, you know, a, a, a great one V one spar, we'll say. Um, and, you know, just just the kind of their overall uh, uh, potential, I think, is how I'm going to rank them. So first off, we got Katsuki Bakugo. Um, Bakugo for sure is like that pro hero tier. Um, he's one of the most capable, uh, strong students that there is. Um, the only downfall that he really has is like his temperament. Um, but as we've seen with like Endeavor, like you can become the number two hero, uh, with a pretty shitty temperament. So I would put Bakugo up there as much as I actually literally cannot stand him as a character. Um, he's definitely like at the, the top of the top. Uh, Ochako Uraraka. I'm going to put her all the way down and needs work. I do think that she could be a hero. However, the problem that Uraraka faces is she does not have great capabilities outside of, like, specific situations, I think is how I'm going to phrase it. Um, if she has things that she can float nearby, you know, small items that she can use as an attack or a barrage, she works well, but she doesn't have a whole lot of, like, show up and save the day kind of potential and she doesn't have a whole lot of like support potential showing up to a situation unless she's in one of those specific situations uh her ability to float her own body doesn't really provide her much mobility at this point um so i don't think that that's like a huge boon for her uh, but she does have like good sensibilities um, her instincts are pretty strong in my opinion and she's got like a good kind caring nature where she could you know help out with injured victims maybe, but I don't think in a, in a dire situation, she's going to be the hero you'd want to call on. Uh, we got Izuku Midoriya, uh, Deku, uh, clearly a pro hero, obviously the successor of All Might, um, some of the highest power potential, um, great instincts. He does, you know, kind of have to like limit his power so he doesn't just shatter his bones into dust. Um, but outside of that, like literally one of the strongest potential characters and the MC, obviously. Um, so like definitely pro hero material. Another pro hero we've got, uh, is going to be Todoroki, like Todoroki, obviously two and one quirk. That's really kind of two different manifested quirks. Um, extremely strong. He's been strong since the first episode. Obviously he's got the ice and the fire, um, really strong instincts as well. Knows what he's doing. Um, though he doesn't get his pro his 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 license right away not his pro hero license but like his uh his help out license basically he's still got um definitely everything he needs to be like a top hero next we got koji koda i'm gonna put him in the capable tier uh we haven't seen a whole lot of koda um his anna voice power is really interesting um he basically can control animals that can hear him by speaking to them um, he's very shy and reserved, um, which I think is not a great temperament if you want to be like a pro hero. So I definitely think he would be more of like a lower hero. He wouldn't be in that top end, um, kind of no matter where he gets to just because of that temperament. But I do think that he has a pretty strong quirk. Um, living in like they, they live in like, like city Japan, right? Um, that's kind of where the anime takes place. So like you, 
you're not showing up in the main streets with a you know a bunch of deer around to help you out but you've always got birds he's already shown that he can control bugs as well so definitely could swarm a scene in my opinion with like a lot of different varieties of animals to help him out um could definitely falter in a couple of situations but i do think that he's got at least potential to hold his own if need be um next up we got ojiro i think ojiro would be sidekicked here um ojiro has a, a tail that he can use as an arm um as well as pretty good like martial arts and combat skills that he has shown um he is extremely proficient with using his tail as an additional appendage um i think that he has a lot of potential um but he would be one of the characters would have to focus more on uh his non-quirk abilities right he'd have to be very proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat um he has really no um like long distance attacks any ranged attacks or anything like that everything is going to be very up close and personal so he'd have to make sure that he's always at the top of his game but i think he'd make a good sidekick to a pro hero um, and be able to kind of fend off some smaller minions of, of villains and stuff. But um, as for like a one-on-one -on -one villain fight, I'm not sure how well he would fare. Uh, Kyoko Jiro. Um, I also think Jiro would be in that sidekick tier. She has um, little jacks that hang from her earlobes where she can like plug them into a wall and like listen to things around her and feel vibrations and stuff like that. She's also able to plug her earphone jacks into like some sound amplifiers and like fire off sound shots. Um, I think that she's got pretty good sensibilities um, from what she's shown for, you know, three seasons in the anime. However, she does not have really great offensive abilities. She does require external accessories to be able to use really anything um, offensively capable. Um, but I do think that she could show up to a scene and hear how many, you know, if, if there's a hostage situation, she can hear the number of hostiles uh, in the room. She can hear the number of hostages in the room. Um, she could maybe hear any bombs or anything like that. She she has great awareness, and I think that that would provide really well um, with, like, another hero that shows up to a situation. Uh, next off, we have uh, Hakagare. I actually... Like, we have not seen much of Hakagure. I think I would actually put her in the sidekick tier just because of how powerful her ability is. Um, as you can tell, I think, from the picture, um, she can be completely invisible. Um, she does not shown to have a whole lot of great capabilities um, other than being invisible, but it's so strong, right? Like, you can get such a good sneak attack in on a villain or villains um, by being invisible. Now... If you don't have great combat skills, I don't know how much that's going to help you, but um, definitely in like a life-threatening situation, she provides solid distraction and is like a good bait target because no one can see her, clearly. Um, so I think that she would provide overall to a situation. I just don't know how much. Uh, Aoyama. I'm going to say Aoyama needs work. He has a belly button laser. Um originally in the anime it was if he used it for more than just a little bit at a time he would get a really bad stomach ache um which is a really shitty drawback now he has shown uh specifically in season three that he can fire the laser for longer periods of time and multiple um do multiple shots without uh too much setback um which i think overall definitely is an improvement uh, his issue is that he likes to be flashy he's very french um, you know, so I, I kind of think a little bit of that is going to hold him back as well by trying to look good while he's doing things instead of just getting in there and getting the job done. I also think that his power while strong is a forward shooting laser from his own belly button. Um, it can cause a lot of destruction and it isn't quite the easiest thing to aim. So I definitely think he needs to have a little bit more hone in work before he'd be kind of capable out on the battlefield. Uh, Kirishima. I honestly, I think Kirishima is also kind of in that sidekick tier. Um, he has, he, his whole body can harden, um, to like rock, like, uh, structures. Um, it makes him very good at like bulldozing through things or deflecting shots. If he's pro hero yet, I don't quite think he's at the level of 
everyone that is above him. Um, but he has shown that he can be strong. He is a little bit hot-headed in certain situations, much like young Bakugo. Um, but the difference is, I don't know if his quirk necessarily is as strong and as well-trained as Bakugo's. Um, I think he just needs a little bit of work to kind of elevate him from that sidekick to that pro hero tier, in my opinion. Mm, Sue is a tough one. Um, Suyu Asui has the ability to do anything that a true frog can do. Um, she is very borderline, in my opinion, between sidekick and pro hero. The, the only thing her her abilities right she has like a very long tongue that she can use as a weapon and to throw things around um she's shown that she can actually be completely invisible if she focuses hard enough she can run very fast she's very agile around water um i just don't know if her quirk is quite good enough to be an amazing hero i think i'm gonna put her in that sidekick tier but she is one of she is the most borderline so far out of any of these um Again, she her her tongue is her main weapon. Um, she can wrap people up and throw them around. I just don't think if you have a well trained villain, she's gonna be able to single handedly put them down. I think she'd be there more for support. Um, but she has shown that she is very strong in her own right. Uh, Fumakage Tokayami um, is definitely pro hero material. One of the strongest uh, students in the class. Um, his ability is that he can possess a dark shadow, which is, um, basically a bird, uh, shadow that comes from his body that he has mostly control over. However, there are, have been certain situations where the shadow becomes stronger than him and can actually just start wreaking havoc. Um, he has shown great potential to control that though, and to hunker that down. However, if it's pitch black, dark nights, might have a little bit of struggles, uh, but he has shown that he has great potential and that he continues to get stronger and stronger with Dark Shadow. Um, he really lacked in melee abilities because when Dark Shadow would come out, it would kind of fly all around and hit stuff. And he has actually shown that he can um, have Dark Shadow kind of cover his body as like an extra suit of armor almost. And he can then um, have melee combat, um, which I think has proven to be extremely strong for him in the last uh, season or so. So I would put Togayami in that top tier. Uh, Momo Yayorozu. This is a difficult one, right? Like, she's shown that she's powerful. We know that she was one of the top uh, the entrance, exam entrance exams. However, she's, she's again, she's going to be borderline. She's a lot like Sue. Um, I think I'm going to put her in the sidekick tier just because I, I wouldn't classify her with the top four, honestly. Um... She can use lipids in her body to create basically any object she wants to create from her body. Um, the couple of drawbacks she has is larger items do take longer for her to create. So if she's trying to create a, a giant net to catch something, right? It could take too long for her to create that and get it in place. Um, unfortunately, I think that her quirk, while very strong has a substantial use limit right like you only have so much lipid protein in your body that once that's expended that's it um she's shown that she's got very strong instincts she's very smart on the battlefield very resourceful um i do just think again that like sue her quirk uh holds her a little bit back from being that top tier um Denki kaminari kaminari is a weird one I think I'm going to put him in the needs work tier as well. Um, he has shown little flashes of being able to control his lightning, but basically basically what his quirk is, is he can shoot giant electrical bursts out of his body. Um, it's like a million volts. It just it would actually just kill things um, if he were to hit anybody, but he can't really control where it shoots. So it's just like... Um, so if anything important or anyone important is nearby, he's just going to fry them. He has shown that he can use devices to kind of like make a finger gun and shoot electricity out of there and it'll go to the device wherever he shoots that. Um, but he has a very awkward demeanor. Um, he's a little bit rushed and a little bit um, unintelligent, we'll say. 
Um, another drawback of his quirk is that if he uses it too much, he loses like brain cells at that time. So he just becomes very stupid after using his quirk, which is like a clearly massive drawback that if you have an, an extended engagement, uh, you're just an idiot. So I would definitely leave him down there. Uh, we got Mezu Soji next. I think Shoji is interesting. I think I'm going to put him in the capable TR though. I do like Shoji quite a bit. Um, he, instead of having normal human arms, he has like these weird wing things. And from them, he can make more like appendages is kind of the word I want to use. Like he can make an eyeball or a mouth or an ear. He can also use the wings to like, can like make a nest on his back or like have like a canopy almost. It's hard to describe. Um, I think that he's got great capabilities in saving people, especially if they're injured. He can you know, scoop them up in his arms and, and run um, and save them and get them to a safe place. He's also shown that he, like Jiro, um, can listen through walls, um, has very good sensibilities when it comes to, uh, like, locations and stuff like that. He can make several eyes that go all the way up to see far distances. He's got a lot of potential. It's just something that he would need to hone. And he hasn't shown great combat abilities, so I think he would play more of a sidekick role, but just something he would need to develop overall. Uh, next up, we got Sato. Sato, we haven't seen a whole lot of. His quirk is that uh, he can basically transform sugar into muscle. Um, so the more sugar he eats, the more muscle he gets. Uh, a couple drawbacks of that are uh, he's just got to eat a ridiculous amount of sugar to get really strong, um, which is not healthy for your body, as, as you know. Um, but I do think that he has shown that he can be quite capable in certain situations. Again, he's not great in extended engagements as the sugar wears off. He loses some of that muscle. Um, I do think he is capable um, and had potential for maybe pro hero status down the line. Um, but it would need a lot of work for him to get there, in my opinion. Um, I just think that he would need to better utilize his quirk. Um if he could extend how long and how well the sugar lasts to where he doesn't have to eat an entire cake for a 10 minute fight, um, that would greatly, greatly improve his overall abilities. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to disagree when I put Minoru Mineta in the total bust tier. Uh, he, he has grape like structures for hair uh, on his head that grow back instantly and are very sticky and will stick to anything. That's not him. Um, Manetta's real issue is that he is a tiny little pervert. Um, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. And that he is very easily distracted. He does not have uh, much heart or soul or anything. He is not interested in being a, a hero. Um, he's also like three feet tall, which is very uncomfortable. Um, and very childlike. He is, he is very childish. Um, if he uses too many of the balls off his head, uh, he'll start to bleed. So that's like a pretty bad drawback as well. Um, but realistically, all he can do is like stick people in place. He does have like slight, um, like capabilities in terms of helping out. Um, uh, but really all it is, is just like gluing someone down for a bit. Um, there's just too much in his way personally for him to be a hero at all. Uh, Tenya Ida, class rep. I'm going to go ahead and put in the pro hero tier. He definitely needs a, a tiny bit of work in terms of um, situation identification. Um, he's he's a little quick to run in, and then later on, he's a little uh, late to run in. Um, he's got a very interesting dynamic when his personality changes over the course of the show. Um, his quirk is that he's got engines in his calves, and he can run real fast. His older brother was actually a well-known hero, so uh, with the same quirk. So he has shown that it is definitely possible. Um, I think it's just something that he just he needs the time to finish up schooling, and I think that he's he's got uh, everything that it takes to be a good hero. Uh, next, we got Ashido. Ashido can create acid from her body. Um, initially, she was very uh, absent-minded. Um, I think I'm going to put her in the needs work tier as well, just because we haven't seen a whole lot of her and she is very, she's a little spacey um, and she hasn't shown to have 
great control over her ability. Not control, but uh, uses of her ability. Um, she's just she she lacks some confidence. Same with Uraraka. She kind of they both just kind of lack that confidence and knowledge. Um, you know what? I actually now that I think about it, with seeing everyone else here, I think I'm gonna move Uraraka up a tier. Um, just because she does have some combat training, like some actual combat training outside of her quirk that these three don't have. So I think she's she's a little more capable. Um, she did do like an internship with like a, a very brutal hero that taught her a lot of combat uh, training. So I do think that that actually helps her out a little bit more. Um, but with Ashido, she just she she's got very corrosive acid that could cause a lot of problems. It's not used properly. And I think it's just going to take her a while um to be able to control that and harness that power a little bit better uh last up we got Saro. uh Saro can shoot tape from his arms i would you know what i actually might even move him up to sidekick um he has shown pretty good control over his tape um it is shown to be quite potent um in terms of what it can do um it's very strong and he's got decent temperament um when it comes to his sensibilities um he is not too quick to act maybe a little bit but he's overall he's he's fairly level-headed um he does need a little bit of direction which is why i think he'd make a good sidekick um just being told you know you need to do this and he goes cool i got it he's also shown to have a lot of mobility with the tape like spider-man he's very spider-man-esque in terms of he can swing with the tape um he can wrap people up um, I think a little bit extra uh, melee prowess, maybe, you know, similar to uh, Ojiro, if he could have a little bit of martial arts background, it would definitely help him with how much mobility he has. Um, so I think overall he'd make an okay sidekick. And that is my list. I'm going to take a quick look through here and see if there's anything I'd like to change. This feels pretty good. Like, and you can definitely tell, like, these are five of the most prominent characters in the show. Um, these three here are also fairly prominent. The only one, um, that is like capable or lower. That's, that is a prominent, um, not main character, but like, you know, side character, uh, is Uraraka. And a lot of her problem is that she is just not very confident and that her quirk is, um, different, I guess. Uh, well, interesting. She has not shown a whole lot of application for it. But everyone else lower is like, you know, a, a fairly back character. Um, and then like Ojiro just has an interesting ability that brings him up um, from being kind of a back character. But this is how I would rank uh, class 1A from My Hero Academia. Let me know down in the comments what you would do uh, differently. And if you think anyone should be moved up or down. And if you put Manetta above Total Bust, I don't trust you. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.